All right, hey everybody, welcome to Learn, Turn, and Earn, the show where we teach you how to learn something, turn it around quickly, and earn income with it. And uh, fortunate enough to have, as always, Ted here, my co-host, uh, we've, got, we've got with us today <laughs> our special guest, Steve Rosenbaum, which I'm so excited to have Steve on because Steve is uh, the original back-end specialist, which sounds like a little bit of TMI if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and of course, Steve has his Rainmaker series on uh, on iTunes and on Periscope. So we're going to dig in a little bit and talk to Steve a little bit about that. And of course, hanging out in the wings here, we've got our good friend Paul Jenkins. And uh, Paul was on a couple weeks ago to talk about Udemy. So I have a feeling Udemy is going to come into the mix a little bit today as well. Yeah, I'll so, try to avoid saying anything too controversial. <laughs> there you go. Well, welcome, gentlemen. Hello, hello, hello. And so, <laughs> then there you go. So we'll start the ball. So we'll start the ball out rolling. So I see, I see Steve Rosenbaum is doing lots of great things these days. I see you with your, you've got your podcast up on iTunes, which I don't know if you're still up with to speed or you've kind of slacked off a little bit for Periscope. I'm anxious <laughs> to find out. And uh, so I see you doing the, the Periscopes, and I know you've just got a brand new course on Udemy, which I, I'll let I you do, talk a little bit about, and we'll have to put the coupon with the Hangout, so the people who are interested, um, you gave us a very nice uh, discount for our audience. Absolutely. I hope you have that coupon, because I didn't even think to bring it with me. Um, I do not, actually. Okay. I'll, because dig I'll dig it up sometime while Paul's talking. <laughs> somewhere along, we'll grab it. Yeah, I got, for those of you who haven't kind of followed, I got virus this week, and, and so I've kind of lost track of a lot of stuff, but uh, we're getting back up to speed over here. Very good. And that doesn't mean a virus himself. That's on his computer. On my computer. So, what can we do? It is where we're, the way things go. But um, hey, so best place to start. So, so Steve, your your obviously your original work, the back end specialist. You show people how to make loads of money on the back end. And so I want to I want to kind of talk to you a little bit about your expertise. I see you doing a lot of different stuff today. You're doing all kinds of great stuff with LinkedIn. You're doing great things with Periscope. So I'm hoping to kind of pick your brain a little bit so you can share some tips with our great audience on how to get started in a couple of those areas. So should we start with the back end stuff? Well, we can. I always say we should lead with the back end. That's <laughs> why I'm the back end. So, uh, yes, that, uh, you know, that, that, is, that, that is my <laughs> my particular position, right? Um, yes, you know, the, the back end is what gets ignored so much, and here's what I mean by that, folks. It, it does. We have we had a we have a lot of laughs about it, but it's really serious stuff because it's really a huge opportunity for all businesses, for all people that uh, that engage in business in any way. So, you know, with you, you see me doing all that stuff, John. You talked about you talked about the Udemy. You talked about the podcast. You talk about the YouTube and 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 my book, and that's all wonderful. But if it didn't all lead to a back end, then I'd have no way to take those people that, that find me and convert them into actual business, into actual revenue. And without any revenue, there's no money. Without, and without money, there's no business. And so where would we be? And that's why I always say you have to lead with the back end because you have to have something that catches all those crumbs that you lay and, and brings it forward. Does that yeah, make sense? Know, it totally makes sense. And, you know, it's, it's interesting today we see so few people with any kind of back end in a lot of cases. And now many, you know, product creators are kind of saying, let's start with the back end a little bit, with the back end in mind, so that we, we're really kind of developing what we need up front to make sure that we can capture what we can on the back. So um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about that, if you would. You know, like, what, what, do you, what are kind of, what's some of your thoughts on the best way for, for guys who don't have one to kind of get started? What should they be looking at? And okay. guys who, who are kind of just starting out fresh, should they have that kind of mindset? Maybe start... With the back end in mind, maybe even think about what that back end product should be and then kind of lead into it. Okay. Well, there's one question. There's one question that I always want you to be thinking about. What happens next? Okay. If you always think about what happens next, then you'll be in good shape. For instance, if you're in sales and you're out and you're prospecting and you're meeting people, or let's say you're at a networking group, let's say you're on a hangout, okay? And I introduce myself. Hi, I'm Steve Rosenbaum. I'm the original back-end specialist. I need to have a next. I have oh, somebody's going to say to me, "Oh, 
that's interesting. What does that mean? Or they're going to say, oh, are you a doctor? Or they're going to make some funny joke or whatever the case <laughs> might be. And that's okay. I'm ready for that, right? But it's all going to lead back to somewhere. Depending on where the conversation goes, then I'll likely say to them, you know what? I have a great story about that. For instance, I've got a story that's a chapter from the book, so what do you can do? And it's called The Perfect Sales Storm. And you can, get, you can go hear that. Would you like to hear a great story about my first real success in sales and how I used to think I was good. When I was young, I used to think I was good. It turns out I was just lucky. But there was a moral to that story that I figured out that makes me a much better salesman today. So would you like to know about that, John? I would love to know about that. Excellent. You can hear all about that at zaplink.us slash storm. Zaplink.us slash storm. And by the way, that's very real. If you're watching this right now and you want to hear that story, then write that down. Don't you dare leave this this hangout to go read that go listen to that now. But make a, you know, make a note of that for later. Zaplink.us slash storm. You'll get to hear a great story, but you'll also get introduced to my back end. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. Everybody <laughs> loves a free story that leads into something bigger. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> So, uh, the, what what comes next? All right. Now, if, if you go there and you listen to it, you're going to see that uh, there's a path there. If you want more information, you're going. It's going to be very evident to you what to do. If you're not interested, you might simply go away, and that's okay. That's okay, uh, because what I'm really trying to do is I'm really trying to find and engage the people that might be ready, willing, and able to conduct business with me right now. Now I do have I do lay, I lay seeds along the way, so that if you're not ready, willing, and able to do business with me right now, now I'm going to be in front of you and I will nurture you and give you more information. I'll educate you, I'll entertain you, I'll engage you in the hopes that you'll eventually become ready, willing, and able. And then when you say, you know what I need? I need a back end specialist. And wh and who else are they going to turn to? I'm thinking they're going to turn to you. The original back-end specialist, of course. Of course. <laughs> so that's and, how it all works. And it's a great story because it, it does. You know, we kind of have all these little things that lead into something bigger. And, and I've, seen, I've seen you doing a lot of stuff with Periscope, which I'm sure is leading into all of this as well. Because I, I too, am excited about Periscope. I, I see it as being, it's a lot like Google Hangouts when we first started. You know, it's the same kind of a same kind of a, um, a tie-in. You know, where Hangouts is tied in with Google and Google Plus, uh, Periscope tied in with Twitter. And of course, you know, huge impact there, being able to get clients quickly, get uh, people looking at your stuff quickly. And we've heard some great stories from people about the successes that they've had on selling products, getting new subscribers, all from Periscope. So I'm curious to kind of hear a little bit about. You know, like what your successes with that have been and how that's leading into the whole back end. Well, as of today, I can't report concrete examples of successes because, frankly, I've started Periscope this week. But I'll tell you why I'm doing it. And a lot of the reason I'm doing it is to promote my new Udemy business, which I know Paul, I can't wait to hear Paul talk because I'm new to Udemy. I know Paul's an expert on Udemy. But um, I, I love the concept of Udemy where I, I've now brought my first course. It was called Command Big Bucks. By the way, that too is a great course. We will give a link uh, for a discount because I sell it for $197, but I will give a very valuable discount link to John and Ted. And um, by the way, it, it is another way to lead to my back end, but it also does teach. Command Big Bucks is all about making a presence, doing all the things that you mentioned that I'm doing, I show you how to do it on, on Command Big Bucks because, it, it, frankly, it makes you a little bigger than life. The real secret is I'm just a guy that likes to sit on my deck and smoke cigars. But when you, when you see these things, it comes across a little bit bigger than life, and that's the purpose. By the way, Periscope, too, shows me a little real life. Because with the Periscope, I'm doing it first thing in the morning uh, between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. my time. I'm, liter I'm literally getting out of bed and starting the day with the periscope because frankly um, Ted mentioned it you know it shows that I'm down to earth I you know I'm uh, I'm just it's, it's the first thing that I'm doing but I want to start the day for people with good inspiration good stories and so forth so it's the first thing I'm doing when I'm getting up in the morning well I'm getting my coffee first and then I'm doing my periscope 
That was the question I was going to ask, actually, <laughs> the reason why you were doing it so early. But for me, of course, that's in the afternoon, but um, yeah, I was thinking, you know, have people got time to listen to that? But I suppose because it's mobile, they've, anybody's got any time, really, because they can, on the way to work, anything. Well, in this beautiful world that we live in, content has so much value that it doesn't just live for the, you know, if I'm doing a 20-minute Periscope, it doesn't just live for the 20 minutes and the handful of people that are watching me live. And right now, it's only a handful of people, okay? But I'm taking those Periscopes and I'm taking the recordings and I'm turning them into full format HD recordings. I'm putting them up on YouTube, so I'm getting the benefit there. Paul, you'll like this. I even took one of my Periscopes and I made it a bonus uh, lecture in my Udemy course. So it gave me a reason to update my Udemy course and send a message out to all my Udemy students that says, hey, I've got brand new content for you. All I was doing was repurposing my Periscope. Yeah. That's nice. great. And all these things are downloadable. I mean, how cool That's is right. that? That's right. That's right. So, it seen... so, so Ted, to answer your question, um, I don't know if there's a lot of people. To, to, date, Paul, to, to date, Ted, no. Okay, There's not a, a ton of people watching it live, but I'm getting a lot of residual value out of the content that I'm repurposing in many ways. Well, at least you're not wasting your time at all, and I'm sure that, like anything, if you perhaps um, get on the right subject that people want to know about, that they'll suddenly start engaging with you, and if you get start getting a few people engaging with you and spreading the word, it will take off. That's the way it all works. It's and 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 all these things, all these things mesh together, you like like teeth in a gear, and and so that's the idea. Uh, so I expect that will happen. That's right, Ted. Yeah, and all the all the hashtagging and everything helps. You know, you're you're creating some branding around your rainmaker name. So seeing you've been hashtagging Rainmaker, mm -hmm. and you know that kind of all helps to bring it all together as well because you're creating a brand, you're creating a, a hashtag that comes up all the time when when you pop that in, and the people will have it as searchable. It doesn't hurt, by the way, that um, and I started Rainmaker three years ago, maybe. Uh, and it doesn't help that CopyBlocker went out and introduced a, a, a web platform called Rainmaker, so I'm sure they're hashtagging with Rainmaker. Uh, so I, I figured that I might be able to tag into tap into some other stuff that's going on. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a great thing if you can tap into trends that are happening, and you know that's something we don't talk enough talk enough about either. You know, we've been able to tap into some of the webinar GM trending and some of the different things that have gone on in our area of expertise, and so that's obviously something nice to look for. Now, does that? How does this all tie in? Because I've been seeing you also doing a lot of stuff with LinkedIn. So how is this tying in for you with some of the things that you're doing on LinkedIn with the periscopes and are you, are you able to repurpose some of the content over there and get some, get some feedback and some eyeballs on it from there? Yes. Remember, the, the first thing is to lead with your back end, all right? And when you've got your back end in place and you know that your back end is, it is a machine, it works for you 24-7, 365, it never takes a holiday, it never lets things fall through the cracks, and it helps you identify your best immediate opportunities, and then it nurtures the rest of them when you set it up the right way. When you've got that in place, now you just need to be as visible as possible and get as many people into that machine as possible. And so it all works in that way, whether it's the, the, the hangout we're having right now, the, the Periscope, the LinkedIn, the blogging, the podcast, the YouTube, it's all made to feed the machine. Yeah, you know, okay. oh, go ahead, Ted. I was just going to say, <clears throat> now that I'm back and finished my meal, if you, anybody was wondering why I was kept um, getting off camera and muting, is because uh, I was very late on having my meal. Um, Steve, you said there's a lot of cogs involved in here. What about the one that you haven't mentioned? Are you talking about my, my email marketing platform, my marketing automation platform? No, that's another one. What have you got in your hand? Oh, my, my Babalu cigar? That's the one. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to give them a, uh, a shameless self-promotion plug, but I will. <laughs> so, well, so, so, go on, explain what the uh, cigar tie-up is, Steve. 
Well, the, the, the I just I, I love cigars. I do, but what my 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 best client, my favorite client, and my good good friend is the owner of the Babalu Cigar Shop. And and frankly, he didn't start that way. He started just by being a client. I started just by being a customer and buying a cigar from him. The next thing was we became uh, he, he we developed a, a client relationship. We've more than doubled his business, but uh, I love his cigars, and so frankly. This is this is a chance to do what I love. This is a chance to spread the word, help people with their marketing, and I'm just going to happen to enjoy a cigar with it, just as my buddy Paul over there is enjoying a glass of red wine. Right, Paul? Damn right. Firearms version of Learn Turn and Earn today. <laughs> the only well, one difference. Thompson would tell you, firearms and alcohol go very well together. Yeah. <laughs> but the one difference between Steve and Paul is that uh, Steve is getting paid. To smoke his cigar, Paul, you're missing out. Whatever the wine is, get hold of and say, as featured. Well, I didn't tell you about my contract with Provence, did I, uh, Ted? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Do you have one, Paul? Really? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> because well, no. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you another funny story I love to tell, and um, and and and, it, and it's funny, you know, the very very first episode of Rainmaker. By the way, I keep talking about Rainmaker. If you don't know what it is. You can go to rainmakermaker.com, rainmakermaker.com, and this is a story. This is me educating you on sales, on marketing, how to build your back end, and it's all story based, real life stories. And and it starts with uh, me getting fired. Okay, it starts with me getting fired from my job. The very first episode is called "The Train Ride from Hell," and I talk about that long, long trade ride after I got fired and I had to go home with that pit in my stomach and having to tell my wife and, and, and feeling humiliated, feeling that everybody in the train was looking at me. Here, there's a loser that just got fired. And probably a lot of us have been in a situation like that. But anyways, funny story about that train, that very same train, about what we're talking about, is um, I worked on the fourth floor of a building downtown Chicago. That's where I grew up. I now live in Austin, Texas. And um, there was a guy who owned a cabinet-making company on the third floor of my building, and I'd see him every day as I'm walking out to go get lunch. He's there. We became quite friendly. And he always talked about taking the train, but I never saw him on the train. I couldn't understand why I never saw him on the train. So one day I asked him, how come I never see you on the train when I'm taking the train? He says, well, that's because I'm driving the train. <laughs> so I was paying $150 a month to be a passenger on the train. He was getting paid several hundred dollars a month or maybe several thousand dollars a month to actually drive the train to work. So I figured that's the way to do it, right? How, well, how do you turn a, a, an expense into an asset? That's the way to do it. Yes, brilliant, brilliant. So you're right. If I'm going to smoke the cigars, I might as well get paid for it, damn it. Correct. Exactly so, true. There you go. That is another uh, sideline that uh, Steve does. So, you know, just pick out the tips from here. You don't just concentrate on the one thing, as John said right from the start. You know, you've got a front end, you must have something that is either a back end or something that you follow on to. Well, you know, and I love that you guys are around today because um, one of the things that, of course, I'm, I'm always looking at, and I, I say, you know, I don't think there's any, been any real time that's been this interesting to be in the, in the field that we're in and that we've got Google Hangouts where we can create great stuff and get eyeballs on our stuff. We've got Periscope where we can do that. We've got all these new tools that are free, easy to use relatively, and then on top of it, we've got things like Udemy that let us create courses and kind of take a lot of that, a lot of the challenges that people have in kind of getting started with getting a course up online. And um, I'm hoping to get both of you guys to speak a little to that today because I see that as a huge, huge advantage. I mean, what a great thing. One, you've got somebody kind of driving traffic for you. You've got a million eyeballs coming into Udemy every month. And, um, you know, you're able to create great, cor great coursework and kind of lead them off and lead them on using some of the other tools that we've mentioned. So who wants to lead in on that one? Paul, please. I, I, I defer to you on this. <laughs> well, hey, I, I think that uh, to kind of put this delicately, um, internal and external funnel construction, Viz Udemy, I think is, uh, is, is obviously very, very important. And I think, you know, this absolutely ties into, into what Steve is doing, of course, because 
the whole issue is basically how to how Udemy can be part of your marketing mix. Essentially, you know, if you're running backends, you know, external to Udemy, the question is how to how to delicately and and I guess ethically as well, um, you know, use the Udemy platform to to do that. Actually, in honesty, because you know, if you look at it from Udemy's point of view. They they clearly want you know the the control inside their platform. They don't want too much leeching off their platform. On the other hand, they also want you know really quality instructors and people who really know what they're talking about. And you know at a certain level, those people are not going to simply stay on the Udemy platform. That's the that's that's the bottom line actually. So so the issue the issue really, and I think it's still in I think it's still in in kind of ongoing development in a way, is how is how all of that works. You know whether that's working through, you know, bringing some people out through webinars and and extending the content in that way. Um, whether it's also working in terms of perhaps uh, putting together chains of courses. So for example, you know, um, I don't know, feed your cat parts one, two, three, and four. Um, you know, but if you want the uh, the masterclass on feeding the cat, you know, hop across too. You know, stuff like that. Basically, it's it's the the challenge. Basically, is how to how to give as well as to take, I guess, in a way that uh, you know Udemy are going to are going to be uh, reasonably comfortable with, um, but in a way that doesn't you know doesn't take take your arms off and and your ankles as well. Well, hopefully, Paul, and I'm new to the Udemy thing, but hopefully the things that I'm mentioning in terms of like posting a Periscope and stuff like that, yeah. hopefully they're okay with something like that. You know, I think um, one thing I've I. That that occurred to me a while back, and I think I think uh, I, I I think as I go on with Udemy, it's 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 being reinforced. Is that actually on-screen personality is becoming really important, and actually Periscope, of course, speaks to that. You know, and having a definable on-screen personality, which you know Steve Steve obviously has, um, is going to be hugely helpful on Udemy and of course on Periscope, and there's a kind of emerge emerging of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so. You know, it's um, you know, Wait, you, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, Paul. Go ahead, please. No, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. You know, it's 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 infinite. Okay, it's a circle, and it all works upon itself. I I know I've spoken with many U, Udemy instructors that are bringing a lot more business to Udemy to their courses on me by promoting on YouTube, by doing Hangouts, by doing Periscopes. When I'm on my Periscope. I'm telling people about my Udemy course, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so to that end, it works both ways. We're using those platforms to drive traffic, drive sales to Udemy. In the same token, we want to keep the circle going, and you know, and, and so we may meet somebody and talk to them about feeding your cat part one, but we might want to tell them, hey, check out a highlight from feeding your cat part two that I put up on you on, on YouTube. Yeah, and in yeah. that way. It becomes a circle, and it becomes leverage, and we get exponential growth, and we get evergreen content that yeah. that ultimately works in Udemy's and and everybody's benefit. Yeah, it seems to me that Udemy is going to move in the direction of a social community as well. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's it's essentially as the as the technology keeps ramping up and the broadband speeds keep you know keep escalating and so on and so forth. You know, it, it's it's all going to become more fluid in it and and in, interactive actually. And you know the the 65 million of investment that Udemy got a few weeks ago to you know to to take their platform to the next stage. I mean, compared to the 63 billion U.S. dollars, uh, which is estimated to be the uh, the online the online learning market value for 2015, um, you know, I mean that's just staggering, frankly. And so it seems to me that what we're talking about here is a kind of nascent. Uh, Kindle for online courses potentially, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, you think about the publishing revolution. Well, there's, there's clearly going to be an educational video uh, revolution coming down the tracks pretty damn quick. And you, you know, Udemy is definitely one of the bigger players there. You know, but it, it, it's part of the. It's clearly part of. You know, this is this is why I'm loving your branding course actually, Steve, because it's it's very much part of. You know, you you define your brand. You get as you say, you get your back end working, and you and you know your if one's playing it right, one's 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 looking at a, a whole mix of things going on to 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 basically define your personality out there, and you know, and bring your ideal clients in and all the rest of it. So, yeah, that's how I see it. Excellent. I couldn't agree more. 
So it's always what, a problem in an online debate, John, when everyone agrees with everyone else. You know, we got to you got to get some I disagreement. Come on. Gotta get some disagreement. <laughs> I don't know. I can. I don't know how I can start that. Um, it's that good for a talk show, is it? When everybody agrees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can fix that. <laughs> I disagree. No, but you know, it's it's um it, it occurs to me. I mean, I've been watching Paul obviously doing a lot of stuff with Udemy. Um, and again, we've done all this work with Hangouts and starting to do some stuff with Periscope and. Um, it's just kind of it intrigues me that now is probably like a real good time for people who have that course in them, you know, have that book in them. It's great to be able to you know repurpose all of this content. So one of the biggest things we talk about is hey, we're creating stuff all the time. We want to repurpose, and um, Udemy seems to me to be a great place for people to just get started with getting their um, you know get maybe even just getting a new product up. And having yeah. that funnel be very easy to put together, mm -hmm. um, and kind of get their feet wet and things. Yeah, I'll, right stir, I'll, I'll stir the pot here, though. I'll, I'll start to stir your debate up for you, John. Which is, which is that actually there's a bit of a trap in Udemy as well, which is that you know more ex people, more experienced people like Steve, understand that you need to get the back end, you know, the mid level, the mid level offer and the high level offer fixed first before you start putting out all your effectively your lead magnet, magnets and your front ends. But most people who are coming into Udemy have, of course, I mean, like yours truly, absolutely zero clue really about, about marketing, uh, sales marketing, online marketing, online sales. And therefore, the temptation is, of course, to do a whole series of front ends, which are relatively small beer compared to, compared to what sh really ought to be happening on the back end. So, you know, there's a kind of, um, I think there's a kind of evolution coming down the tracks, actually, where as people, you know, start to become more aware of that, they're going to be thinking how to position themselves to, you know, to, to operate correctly, actually. Um, because, you know, th at the end of the day, you know, Udemy is doing a whole series of price testing at the moment. They're, they're testing prices between $9 and, say, you know, $19 and perhaps up to 20 22 27 if you like. But effectively what's happening is, is there's being a, a kind of discounted uh, standardization of pricing effectively where the price expectation for a lot of courses on Udemy will be around about $10. Yeah. And clearly if if you have a significant level of expertise and you're serious about building out content for sale, then really where, you, where you're trying to head to is 127 197 and north of that. So that's going to be quite tough to do on Udemy, I think, where you have a you know, a kind of a harmonization of, 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 price, of constant price promotion sort of two or three times a month by Udemy down to, down to around the $10 level. And, of course, once the affiliates kick in, as, an, as a Udemy instructor, you're getting 25% of that $10. So gives well, you know. yes. Uh, can I share my approach to that and, and, and my outlook on that? And to your point, Paul, um, you're right. You know, because I view Udemy as part of my machine. I'm not viewing it as this is where I'm going to make my, my all my income, okay? And I'm also interested in the lead generation and getting more people. Now, to your point, I've seen people that, and you've seen people that start on Udemy, and this is the first thing they do, and they don't have a following, and they struggle to get over that hump. They struggle to even make their very, very first sale. And when I was able to come in there and do what I did, I was able to generate 1,200 sales in the first two days, and about fifteen hundred dollars worth of revenue. Do the math; it's only about a buck a piece. But people were astounded that I could actually make fifteen hundred bucks in my first two days. But the reality is, it's because I had those other things in place that that, that I could do that. All right. Now, at the end of the day, I'm okay. I the the, the price of my course is one hundred ninety-seven dollars. I'm okay that it's getting sold on promotions at. Nine dollars or ten dollars. In fact, I, I I've got a link and I put it in the chat, John, when you're ready to share it, where people can get my hundred ninety-seven dollar course for nine bucks. And I'd love for you to have that. You're getting something of terrific value. I'm getting value though too because you're now being introduced to me, and I'm I'm going to tell you that I'm a marketer and that's what I do, and you will be marketed. <laughs> you're going to learn some great content, but you're also going to be marketed too because that's what I do, and you'll get exposed to my new Udemy courses when they come out, the other things that I do, the tools that I think are you should be a part of. When I'm hanging out with John and Ted and Paul, you're going to learn about all that stuff uh, as you take my course. The, the, other, the other thing I was going to say is that, in a way, every subscriber that you get, it isn't costing you um, for paid traffic. 
you know, you're, you've made the product, you've made the product, so you're not paying any more for that. So everyone that subscribes is a bonus to you. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll put another grenade on the table, actually, guys, which is that um, I think that, I think the truth is that um, Udemy actually is, a, for people who are starting out, it's, it's a fabulous way to start to define your avatar, to define your audience, you know. I mean, you know, if you think about it, basically there's a, a stack load of traffic running both through the platform. So if you get the SEO right in terms of the course title, subtitle, and so forth, uh, Scott Duffy, by the way, has got an excellent course up on, on SEO for Udemy. Yes, so he does. I just took it. That's a great, great yeah, same, same, same here. And actually, I implemented it, and it's <laughs> an instant, I mean, literally instant result, actually. Um, but... Um, you know, essentially, essentially, what's happening here is that you start to really get a feel for who your who your uh, ideal client is through you know where, and you, it's a great testing out platform. But I think the I think the other opportunity here, actually, which it feels to me may tie tie into to what Steve is offering, is, is that by I mean, my, my own feeling is that essentially, in a, in a, in a position where the price point is coming down to ten, basically ten bucks, and it's a you know it's a kind of a mass marketing. Um, Platform effectively of, of online of online education, that that the way to play the platform really is multiple courses. You know, I mean, most I think most successful instructors on Udemy are putting out a minimum of six or seven courses, and and, and many are putting out 15, 20, or even even more than that. And so where that's basically going is membership site territory beyond, and of course, membership site territory and drip feeding and all the rest of it is very much you know back end territory, isn't it, Steve? So, you know, it's um. You know, it seems to me that's that's the that's the the opportunity opening up in, you know, in 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 the reality that is the evolving Udemy. May I share my screen, guys? Absolutely. All right, because I'd like to show you that to, to this is a, the, what Paul just mentioned. All right, if um, let's see, let's see if this is uh, tell tell me. Whoops, hang on, I think I left. Okay, can you can you see? I'm showing Udemy right here. Can you see that on my screen? Yes. Yep, I can see it. Yeah. All right. So, um, the first here's here's my course. It is number one in top paid courses in personal branding. It took me six hours to achieve this position. All right. Now, the very reason that I started with this course, notice, I'm the original back end specialist, but that's not what I'm talking about here. But I did a little bit of research, and my goal was to become one of these four positions. Right off the bat, I decided people browsing. Where I did a little bit of research, where could I, on the landing page, become one of the top four? And I guess I did it right because I became number one in the, in the first six hours. And that's been that way. The, you know, this course is now about three weeks old. I'm still operating that, that top paid course. It, that's a beautiful position to be in because, Paul, how many people are coming across the, the Udemy platform? How many people? Well, I think they've got uh, seven or eight million uh, people in the platform now. Um, obviously, certain categories are, are are you know better than others, but I mean you're you're there in a in a good category, so yes, yeah, that's great. And actually, one of the features of Udemy appears to be it appears to be that you know you don't have the same kind of cyclical pressure that you might have with ClickBank or JVZoo or what have you, in the sense that once you grab one of those top spots in the platform on a category page, you can actually you can actually sit there for quite a long time. I put up a I put up a, co a course on composition for film and photography a few weeks ago, and you know, and to be honest with you, to my you know, I knocked it out in two days, and it's 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 a 45 minute one hour course, something like that, and it sat there on the category page for for five or six weeks in two spots on the same page, you know, kaching, thank you very much, you know, it's it's actually there, it's actually there twice, and and it's it's simply sat there for weeks, and and so. Yeah, I mean, certainly, if you if if you if if you have the kind of skills you know that Steve has and can teach you and and can can you know get your course in there sitting very nicely in the page, thank you very much. Then, then it's then 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 you're smiling to the bank, I think. Well, I'd like to say also, um, I was so impressed with Udemy because I've I've been doing this for a number of years and I've sold hundreds of thousands of dollars of information products on, on uh, over the years. I think the Udemy platform. And, the, and their process of helping me build a product, I think this may be the best quality product I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And it was their process that brought it out. I mean, I've got the content, but they helped me bring the content and present it in a much better way than I've ever done. They're, I was very, very impressed with their process. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think, I think that's I think it's totally a fair comment. I love what you said. That is the way to do it, Paul. Develop a, a, a course in, 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 a, in a day, a couple of days. My, my goal is to be turning out two courses a month, yeah. and within 10 months, you have 20 courses. And, yeah. and I think you're right. I think when, when you get to that point, I expect that it's going to be a machine in and of itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So realistically, guys, there's a, there's a lot of people listening today that are like, wow, Udemy sounds really cool. So they go out, they put their first course together. It's predominantly video because that's what Udemy likes. It's predominantly a video course. Mm -hmm. How long does it take you to get course up, online, ready to sell? Under, and how a, hard day. Is it for the under a day. Under a day is doable. Um, okay. <laughs> let me let me let me explain. But uh, I mean, basically, the way to the way to totally compress the process is uh, get get your outline to it, providing you're reasonably confident in front of a camera. And if you're not, start practicing now. But basically, get you, get your outline sorted out. You know, understand what it is you want to you want to put up as a minimum viable course. Minimum viable course. So in other words, 35 minutes of of teaching, most people can teach 35 minutes about virtually anything. Get yourself a Logitech 930 or 920 camera. That's step two. I, I mean, I've got all the high-end cameras you can imagine in, the, you know, here, uh, and all the top-end microphones and everything else. And I've realised I've been dumb for the last several months because I've been using that stuff to do my Udemy courses, which of course adds several steps into the pros into the production chain. But the way to do this is very simple: Logitech 920, ScreenFlow or Camtasia. Get a decent setup, get a decent light on you, get a reasonable mic, record the lectures, bang them up into Udemy, fail on the first review, get it through, <laughs> get it through the second review, and you're going to have your course up there unbelievably quickly. I had a, I've just put a course out. It took, it took about two hours to go through the review process from the moment I submitted it into Udemy. It's now selling, you know, and that's within, that's within a day, quite seriously. So, so you know, if you've got a if you've got an actionable plan together, actually, I mean, you know, honestly, you can just knock you can knock out the courses like there's no tomorrow. You you, you do need to make sure though that that that, there's, that the the quality standard is reasonable because if you start to get a whole bunch of bad reviews or you know people complaining and so forth or, or God forbid refunding, obviously that's not going to do you any favors in the, in 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 your overall profile on Udemy or indeed your sales. But if you have the confidence and you, you you know you've got your plan together and you understand what it is you want to teach, you know knock out several courses very very quickly. I, th I think and uh, I, I like what what Paul says and I'm making the same mistake. I went out and I invested in green screen so that I could do you know the, the talking head portions where people could see me because I was told that was important, um, and it was the most laborious part of of what I did. And I and I'm not and it's a part that I'm least happiest with. Okay, um, but people do want to see you on camera. I think I think Paul's suggestion is right on target. And I've got I think I've got 22 reviews, and if I'm not mistaken, 20 of them are five star reviews, and two of them are two star reviews. And the two two star reviews told me the same thing. They it was too much of a PowerPoint. There was too much PowerPoint and not enough Steve. Is is basically what they said. And to their credit, you know, I mean, I was, I was initially quite upset. Hey, how come all these people are giving me five stars and these people give me two stars? And I look, and neither one of them had gotten fully through the course. And so I thought, well, that's unfair. They give me a two-star review. They didn't get fully through the course. And then I realized where they dropped off, and where they dropped off was before I got into the meat. You know, they, they just went through the PowerPoint, and they lost interest in it. I, I think there's a huge, I think there's a huge, huge factor as well, which is mobile, because you know, for the moment you, the moment someone's looking at one of these courses on a on a on an iPhone or on a you know a, a, a mini iPad or whatever it is, you really don't want to be banging too much text up on a on a screen. Yeah, it's yeah. simply it's it's simply not going to work. Push button courses, of course, you know how to do Photoshop, la di da. It's it's tough because you're going to be doing endless. Endless zoom ins on the screen flow or what have you. Yeah. But certainly, if you're teaching, you know, marketing, sales, or networking, or any of this kind of stuff, then absolutely just knock it out with, with you know, face center stage on a reasonable on a reasonable sized uh, uh, aspect ratio because, you know, it's it's going to work on any platform, and and the engagement, as you say, Steve, is just so much better. I think Paul said another thing very very important about when it comes to success on Udemy that I've learned about the formula already. It's better to have smaller, single-topic courses than large, 
large. I, I see some courses out there with 90 lectures, and I, and I think that's a self-defeating purpose in a lot of ways. I think it looks great. Somebody looks, wow, 90 lectures, you know, a hundred hours. And look, but let's face it, who's going to go through a hundred hours of video, okay? Yeah. And that actually hurts you. In my understanding, Paul, is it actually hurts you because you're they're looking at how much are people completing your courses am that's, I right? that's that's absolutely right because I think one of the ranking factors for Udemy is definitely the 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 proportion which students complete of what they call active students because there's a whole bunch of students who sign up in the black hat forums la -dee da who just never touch the course anyway so Udemy discounts those but the people who start to watch the course they've actually found that uh, through their research that people who get through the first 10 minutes are very likely to watch the whole course so you know they, so actually top tip guys which is you know when when you do your courses make sure the first 10 minutes absolutely sings and and you could even put the first 10 minutes on free on free preview as a way, as a way to hook people into into buying the course but the um, the other thing here is that actually there used to be a technique whereby you would put out the first iteration of the course and then do and then basically keep updating the course and keep extending the course. But actually, the problem with that is that it, it is like you're elongating the boat race, if you like, and and the percentage of the course that people complete will actually be diminishing. Therefore, your ranking in Udemy will fall. So so in fact, you're actually better off kind of left left hooking that, if you like, and and basically basically putting out a second course as an iteration beyond the first course to keep the metrics good inside the platform so it's it's um you know it's a bit of a, a bit of a subtle point maybe but it seems to me that that can be played to advantage of course the flip side of that is and, and this is you know it's going to be a real science that I'm really looking forward to the way to keep people engaged and one of the ways to even market to them is to update the course so you know if if we can update them with a two or three minute video it gives us the ability to mention to, to to message people and say, "Hey, we've updated the course. Add maybe a couple uh, text lectures or whatnot." But to your point, not get this thing so it's so elongated that you're really defeating the purpose. Yeah, you know, we talked about Periscope a bit earlier, and actually, a very cheeky. I, I haven't used Periscope, and so I, I may be talking talking out of my uh, talking out of the back of my head here. But um, you know, the, the it seems to me that actually if the setup that one's doing a periscope transmission on, if you like, is is quite good. And if those transmissions effectively fade away and disappear within a manner within a matter of days, I almost wonder whether there isn't a double whammy opportunity here whereby, you know, if if you sat down with good energy and you had quite a fluid periscope for, you know, for, <laughs> for 15, 20 minutes or whatever it might be, whether frankly that you record that and that becomes your next Udemy course, you know, I mean the, the the flow through there could be quite interesting potentially. There's no reason it couldn't, or Hangouts for that matter. We could do all yeah, this. Hangouts. We we could have Hangouts and turn it into a Udemy course. Yeah, yeah. The one thing sure. you've got to watch is the audio quality, but uh, you know. Yeah, they don't like that, do they? They they oh, don't like yeah. poor Udemy or poor audio quality. That's yeah. true. Do you know that's why I love these two, John. Makes our job so much easier. We haven't got to say anything. Oh, yeah. hey, great. Let the guys talk. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. So I feel like I'll the guy. I'll shut up now and I'll let you answer questions. No, no, no. I I think this is all great because you know we had the comment before about the Logitech C920, which is a great camera. Got a built-in microphone. This is my sponsorship deal, guys. Logitech, right there. Has has that got a shock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full shock. So, yeah, so Logitech, but uh, yeah. And it's a great camera. I mean, you can put it on your laptop. You can take it anywhere. I know Paul's been creating courses in the park. I mean, what a great thing. You know, you go out to the park, you make a course, and you put it up, and you get paid for it. Yeah. How awesome is that? So yeah, yeah, yeah. there's just yeah. so many things that you can do, you know. I love, I love this conversation. So many tools that work around and work so well together to come together. And, I mean, uh, simple enough just to make videos and then repurpose the, some of the chunks of the videos that we're using for the Udemy course on Facebook and wherever else it might be, you know? Paul, am I correct in saying that you had a course on getting started on Udemy? Uh, yeah, well, I've, do, I've done, done a course called Ultimate Udemy Profits that, um, yeah, it, it's, it's still up there. It's um, certainly available to, to purchase. It's, uh, it, it's basically principally about how to knock out what I call quality courses rapidly. Um, you know, it's the rapidity is and, and the multi-course approach is really, really important. But, but actually, having that, having a kind of um, distinctive quality bar inside the courses, I think matters as well, and, and will matter increasingly over time. 
so yeah, that's that's around it. Okay, and in you you to me, the more courses you do, the um, better grades that you get. You get. I think there's a kind of network effect. Um, people talk about super students inside inside Udemy. People who will literally just they'll see one of your things and they'll just buy another four or five or or even more of them in a chain. And I, I'm seeing that happening quite a lot actually because what's happening is that Udemy, the platform, is promoting out at these ten dollar, you know, eleven dollar, nineteen dollar price points, basically twice a month. And, and so what, what I think what is happening is that some people are spotting a series of courses and thinking, right, I'm going to wait for that promotion. They just simply hop in and they just go one, two, three, four, five. You know, they, it's, it's, it's chain buying, basically. Um, but, the, I mean, the, the real reason for doing multiple courses is the cross-promotion opportunity. Because, mm -hmm. because once, I mean, I've got 5,000 students on there now. Now, oh. And, uh, you know, let me get up to double, triple, quadruple that quite quickly, in fact. And and you know the, every time you bring out a new course, it's it's simply a numbers game. You know you 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 can promote out twice a twice a month for each course, and and obviously you get a percentage of sales off that, and you know it grows in that way. But I think there's a kind of network effect as well that, that, that that's happening inside the platform. Um, definitely. I'd, and I'd also say that if people are waiting to do like a bulk purchase of your courses, that means that you know they want it. They they believe in what you're you're doing, um, so you know it can only benefit you because it's making you um, are more of a guru of what you do, uh, an absolutely. expert. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you know you, you're also getting the the enhanced you know by by having more feedback from from the people across a diverse range of things, you're really triangulating what people are looking for as well, which of course is gold in terms of figuring out you know okay what should I be focusing in on in terms of the teaching. The, the, the other question I'd say uh, on there, um, do people actually ask you questions or say, oh, can you do do this next? So that they give you the, the content that they, they're after. Yeah, to a degree. I mean, the discussions are not, in, in truth, the discussions are not, you know, like wildfire. It's not like Facebook. But but you get enough enough discussions and feedback coming back through to... To give you a clue as to what people really want, actually, um, that's gold. That's gold. That's Je that's Jeff Walker gold. That's seed lo seed launch territory. That's quite oh. funny. Go on. Oh, it strikes me that we should do a course together on how to start for you to me how to. How yeah. To and Done. you can do that, right? You could do a uh, joint author. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and actually, I think. Yeah, you're on, Steve. That that would be my first, actually, and, and um, that's that's actually something I think some of the more experienced instructors are now are now trying to do. Well, excellent. I I, I love uh, that idea. Uh, hey, well, I feel like I've been just cut out. <laughs> it's four of a sudden. I know something I want to do. You didn't. You didn't let, me finish, let me finish the statement. Okay. Um, <laughs> but hey, Ted and John, thank you so much for bringing Paul and I together. <laughs> No, you know, uh, and by the way, uh, absolutely. I mean, this is where we have to walk that tightrope, but I think, you know, this is the purpose of my course, Command Big Bucks. I talk about the importance of doing all these things. And so what I, absolutely, I want to be able to drive people to people like John and Ted because I talk about the importance of, okay, Udemy's one thing, Hangouts are another, Pod, podcasts are another. And so don't worry, guys, we haven't forgotten about you guys. <laughs> um, and, it all, and it all it does you know it all fits so nicely together it's all very hub and spoke and you can pull it all make it all come into place it's it's really cool like that in fact I will offer you guys a, if you guys want to give me a PDF or something about the importance of hangouts I would love to put it up in my command big bucks and just oh, talk okay. about yeah how to do a hangout how to do a podcast because I've got a whole lecture about it so uh, I could introduce them to you guys um, we have to do it you know, we have to do it to get people in the funnel and not give an affiliate link, but just give valuable content, and I'd love to do it. Yeah, cool. Oh, no, that's very good. Um, because yeah, it's fascinating. I, I mean, the different, the, the, and the, I think the variety is amazing. You know, I mean, gosh, they've got everything from health and fitness to it, it's really a fully wide platform of what's available there. Let me take a step back, though, and talk about the big yeah. picture, because I hear Paul clearly saying that, you know, the, the reality is I could price my product at $197, but if you're savvy and you're watching, 
you're going to be able to buy that product for nine or ten bucks twice a year, twice a month. Okay, and I'm seeing that. I'm seeing people buying my product for nine bucks with coupon codes that aren't my coupon codes or Udemy pro, uh, coupon codes. But I'm okay with that. But the point of leading them to the back end is I have other products available outside of Udemy that will never be available on Udemy. Okay, and so I might get nine dollars right now. And, and you're going to get a tremendous value, but at some point in time, you're probably going to want to step up to one of my other courses that might cost $197 that, that you will have to pay $197 or $997, or you might even want me to consult with you, and you might contact me and say, Steve, can you help me out, or could you speak at my event? And that's why I'm okay selling courses all day long on Udemy for $9, because at the end of the day, I view it as lead generation, but I'm not paying for that lead generation. I'm getting paid for that lead generation. I'm driving the train. And, so it's kind of and, like a yeah. I was gonna say it's kind of like a combination of moving the free line. Yes. Except you're yes. building a buyer's list along yes. with it, so people yes. get a great discount. They get introduced to you for less than the price of a pizza. Um, with but, Steve, you can see what exactly what he's doing. A lot of people focus on the um, as we said before the front end and the short times. Um, uh, you know what is happening now. Steve doesn't do that. He looks at what's happening in the future, and that mm -hmm. is where the money lays. You know, it, there's so many people just go and they want it now. But if you're prepared to wait for it, like Steve does, he'll get them in the end because they realise the value he's giving. They'll realise that he's the person that can help them. Ted, thanks so much. I think what I heard you say is, if, if you follow Steve, you're going to get it in the end. Is is what I think you heard. I heard you say. <laughs> Back in <laughs> specialist. <laughs> Steve will make sure you get it in the end. I think is what you just said, Ted. But anyway. <laughs> um, Can I quote that? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. No, no, and that, you know, it's a concept that in in marketing is called maximum customer value, lifetime customer value, okay? And marketers look at, you know, Dan Kennedy's got a, got a, a great saying. I'll throw it out to you guys. What's the purpose of, of getting a, of, of, of making a sale? What's the purpose of making a sale? To me, making a sale is also making a customer. That's it, Ted. That's it. Most people think making a sale is for making money, okay? But making a sale is not for making money. Making sales is for making a customer. Now, you have to have that back end in place that maximizes the value customer so that it, you take it from being a $9 sale into being a customer that's worth thousands of dollars to your business. You're, you're exactly right, Ted. Making a sale is about making customers, not about making money. I'm always right, Steve. I know that. I know that. That's why I knew if I, if I asked a question, I'd get the right answer. Yeah. John, what what time are we running to? We, you know, we're at that stage of uh, of where we should kind of bring in kind of final thoughts. So, you know, I always kind of like to wind down here at the end with, um, you know, what what were your final thoughts, guys, on how people can, and we'll kind of bring it into the whole theme of the show. You know, it's learn, turn, and earn. How can somebody take this, learn from it, turn it around, and make money with it quick? What's your biggest piece of advice? Where's the best place to start with that? I'm going to start with Mr. Jenkins. I had a bad feeling you were going to do that, John. Um, <laughs> where's, where's, well, okay, the, the actually the huge insight I've learned this evening uh, is from Steve, which is you start, you, you should start with your back end, even if you haven't nailed it down, I would say, but at least mentally be tuned into that um, as you launch out onto Udemy, because you know you really you really do need to think about about I mean a multiple core strategy is the right one to have on you I'm absolutely convinced about it but you need to know in what area you're going to be putting those those multiple courses effectively as lead generation as Steve has said and and you know it's so so therefore if, if you've got a if you've got the back end in mind or you've got some idea of where that back end is going to be down the line I think that that's going to help you can help you hugely that's that's what I've taken away this evening Steve, thank you for that, Paul. Um, let me. There's one thing I haven't mentioned, and I think it it it's it may be even above all. Do something you're passionate about. 
do something because what Paul said was, you know, it's important on you to me that people see you and that they like you. And let's face it, that's a lot easier when you're doing something you're passionate about. When you're talking about something you're passionate about. Um, go on, Ted, make a back end joke right now. I'm going woof woof. I'm answering. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. It's a lot easier, and that's when you can speak from the heart. And, 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 you know, Paul said, you know, surely you can sit down and talk about something for 35 and 40 minutes. Well, that's true if you're passionate about that subject, okay? And that passion comes through, and that what, that, that's what engages people. And here's what I love about the world we live in today, and it goes, it goes back to the long tail. Who wrote the book, Anderson, The Long Tail? Uh, what's his first name? Um... Chris Anderson? No. Um, but it's about the long tail. And the long tail means this. The long tail means in today's world, the long tail exists. We all, we all know about the 80-20 rule, where 80% of the business is done by 20% of the customers. Okay, The inverse is true, too. That means that there's the majority of people out there, 80% of the people, will amount to only 20% of your business. But that's a critical 20% that most people ignore because everybody's choosing. They're all going after the low-hanging fruit. They're all going after the big bucks. But what exists, that's called the long tail because if you put it on a graph, it goes like this and it extends out to infinity. And what that means is down that long tail is what we call a niche. It's what we call something to specialize in, something you can be passionate about. If I were a, le if I were a fisherman and I'm not, and if I were left-handed and I'm not, okay, I could do a course on left-handed fly fishing, and I would there'd be an audience out there for me. And today's world, which Udemy is a part of it, is going to allow us to get found by left-handed fly fishermen that share that passion by me. They're going to see that passion that I have for it, and I'm going to engage them, and they're going to want to hear what I have to say about it. That's why you have to do what you're passionate about. That's very good, Steve. And that... Do you know, that's why I enjoy what we're doing um, because every one of us on this Hangout, as we talk, you should see the passion that comes out of us. We enjoy each other's company. When we um, give information, we enjoy giving that information because we know it's going to help people. And everybody on this Hangout is exactly the same, and that's why we get on so well. So that's my last thoughts. Beautiful tip. All right. I'm going to add a little twist on what Steve talked about. And the, the twist I'm going to add to that is not only look at what you're passionate about, but when you find that, look at how you can be unique with that passion. Because one of the things we found out early on as we were looking at, you know, doing work with Google Hangouts, as we said, was quite a few people that have an interest or teaching or coaching on Google Hangouts. And how can we be unique in that perspective? How could we put our own little unique twist on it? And that's the only thing that I would add. I think what you said is brilliant, Steve, and that we really got to kind of, it's easy to it's easy to wrap our head around our passion and, you know, wrap our arms around it and really do something with that. But find that unique twist that makes you special. And well put. really pushing that, I think, really pushes the envelope. But, um, hey, we're at the time. I can't believe it's been an hour already. Um, appreciate you guys joining us today. It's been great. It's always, been. Fun, always fun to hang out with you guys. Mm -hmm. And, um one last, last word. One last John, word, yes. You're always special to me. Thank you. I appreciate that. John, Same John. <laughs> yes. Can we give the link so people can get the course? Um, I did. Bucks. Oh, you did? I did. I did. I put it. Hangouts has this thing, the Showcase app. So as we've been going along, and you've been giving me the links, I've been putting them in the Showcase app. So anybody who comes and watches this, this event at a later time on the replay, they'll automatically see those links that we put in. And Steve, up, Paul, Paul, do you, do you, Paul, do you have a link for your course? Uh, um, what do I do? I'll, I'll, I do. I'll, I'll add, add it. Do you have it, John? Yeah. I do. I'll add it later. If, and then look. Uh, and you people know, who haven't seen Paul's course, we did a couple weeks ago a chat with Paul, and so we have that. So great. you go and watch that. whole different. And then watch, because Paul and I are going to do, if, you're, if you want to know how to get started in this Udemy stuff, Paul and I are going to do a course about that. All awesome. four of us. All four of them. <laughs> We're all Actually, we could do we could do a tryout and see if a hangout will get through a four way hangout will get through we the should. That, would be, uh, that would be that would be a great thing to Well, maybe we can include this as, let's include this as one of the lectures. Yeah, I can see John uh, buying a T one line as we speak. 
Right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the only one they all say when Sonny got an echo somewhere. Yeah, we did. That happens something. every once in a while, which um, that is a little bit of a. I noticed that we did we did like thirty. I did thirty weeks, thirty weeks, thirty hours. Wow, well, see that goes to show you. Thirty hours plus a video, a couple weekends ago, and yes. Oh, the, I'm sticking a fork in it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> That's not a fork. I wanted to show Ted, so he didn't yell at me. That's an Ethernet oh. cable. I'm hardwired. And I got uh, my headphones on, so it's not me. St Ted. Steve, I noticed straight away when you're on there, I knew you were hardwired. Yeah. Yeah, big difference. Huge yeah. difference yeah. for you. Yeah. You know, and so I got a same pretty long cord oh. from from my office straight down to the deck, so I can smoke my cigars yeah. and be hardwired. Fantastic. Wow. So hey, winding up. We'll, we can talk again after we're done here. But um, uh, again, thank you so much for being on today, guys. Uh, audience, you know, all, of you, all of you that join us today, thanks for watching and uh, hope to come watch us again. Loved having you. So, bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.